the boys. <sighs> Did you know in the comics they were called the men? Kidding. But while the themes and motives do stay true to the source material, there are a number of things about the show that are vastly different. Party? Character backstories are changed completely. Certain events that transpire in the show did not go down the same way on the page. I don't want the details. And just wait until you hear about Love Sausage. You seem familiar. With any page to screen adaptation, certain liberties have to be taken. And boy, were they. Let's check out all the wacky, wild, and sometimes disturbing changes that the boys Amazon series made from the comics right now. Terrific! Ah, Stormfront. You were here for such a long time, yet so short in the actual show, and you managed to out-crazy even the homicidal Superman. Mm -hmm. Stormfront as she appears in the show is very different from the one who appears in the comics. For starters, she is a he. Why does it matter whether heroes have a dick or a vag? And while some of the characters' backstory is similar, the one in the comics does not have the same relationship with Homelander that the one in the show does. However, the parts of their backstory that remain consistent are probably their biggest notifiers. Stormfront was not only a Nazi soup, but he was actually created by the Nazis in the comics. He was once known as the most powerful soup and lived an extended life, eventually hiding his identity to the modern public and reinventing himself. So, the spirit of how terrible a person Stormfront is lives on both the page and the screen, but there are still several differences. While Stormfront had a relationship with Homelander in the show, in the comics it is revealed that Vought was using the DNA from older soups to create new, more powerful ones in the modern day. Homelander was created using the DNA of none other than Stormfront. Maybe. It seems the show may be retconning this as well, giving this storyline to another more powerful soup, who just so happens to be the only one the boys believe can stop Homelander. I'm sure it'll all turn out fine. Black Noir's backstory is coming to light more and more in the new season of The Boys. And as interesting as it is, we are learning more and more that it is nothing like his counterpart in the comics. In the series, Black Noir is a current member of the Seven and former member of the team known as Payback, once led by Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy was once as abusive and self-absorbed as Homelander is. I do like the assertive type. Black Noir was no saint himself, always focusing on his own image and rarely caring about keeping people safe. However, it was Noir who came up with a plan in the heat of battle for the rest of the Payback team to overpower Soldier Boy and hand him over to the Russians. During this fight, Black Noir was severely burned and basically had pieces of his brain cut out by America's favorite soldier, leading to the cartoon visions and devout loyalty that is Black Noir today. Because of this, he never takes off his helmet or suit anymore, at least not in front of anyone. If you told a comic reader this was the case, they would laugh at you. This is so far from Black Noir's backstory in the comics, and although he is still very close with Homelander, it's a whole different reason. Black Noir in the comics also keeps his suit and mask on at all times, until eventually he doesn't, revealing that Black Noir is actually a clone of Homelander the whole time. God bless you. It's also revealed that this clone is a deranged murderer. He uses his Black Ops ability to commit some of the most heinous, and until this point, unsolved crimes in the boys' done. universe. There are millions more children just like his... Victoria Newman is becoming a huge player in The Boys. She not only runs a government-led operation regarding soup affairs, but she also has successfully removed Stan Edgar, Vought CEO, and her adopted father. Oh, not to mention the amount of heads she has literally used her mind to blow up. Congresswoman Victoria Newman is a very powerful character who publicly fights to take down Vought. I'm worried about super terrorists too. And it's one of the most terrifying soups we have seen on the show. Nope. Vic the Veep? Not so much. In the comics, Victoria Newman is a male politician named Victor Newman, who goes by Vic the Veep. He is just a powerless political figurehead, who works as basically a pawn for Vought and their interests. Overall, Vic the Veep is a public stooge with no powers, who was given a serious upgrade and backstory by the show. Victoria Newman is a character who could shape the direction that the boys takes, and whose powers have the potential to rival Soldier Boy and Homelander. The Boys series is chock full of soups and more and more seem to be popping up every episode. Hurry! There are cameos and full appearances of people who come directly from the comic page. However, as shows do, some liberties have been taken, and several characters have appeared who you will not find in the pages of The Boys. There are three that specifically come to mind. The first is Ezekiel, the Mr. Fantastic wannabe who leads the Capes for Christ religious group. Now, Ezekiel may not be in the comics, but he is heavily based on the character O Father, who's just as awful, but his power set is more similar to Homelander's, only a lot weaker. The next character is the mind reader Mesmer, who can look into a person's head if he establishes physical contact with them. Mesmer helped the boys unlock the secrets of Kimiko before immediately selling them out to Homelander. He once belonged to the team known as Teenage Kicks. Don't you want Teenage Kicks with A-Train? Yep. An actual team from the comics, though you won't find Mesmer anywhere. 
The last character not to exist in the comics is the one who helped Huey cement his position in the boys. Translucent. That's right, the Invisible Man is nowhere to be found. However, he is based on original Seven member Jack from Jupiter, a disfigured man with impenetrable skin. Huey blew him sky high, but as far as the comics are concerned, he never existed in the first place. One of the most notorious moments from the show and comics is an incident revolving around a hijacked plane. In the show, Maeve and Homelander respond to hijack Transoceanic Flight 37, killing the hijackers but leaving one alive in the cockpit while they celebrate with the passengers. It's all safe. You're all gonna be fine. The last terrorist kills the pilot and co-pilot before being lasered in half by Homelander, who in the process destroys the controls of the plane. Homelander, seeing no alternative, forces Maeve to leave the plane, and watches as the plane full of screaming people crashes into the ocean. Homelander then uses the incident to push the idea of soups in the military, claiming they would have been able to help, insinuating they didn't screw everything up. In the comics, this notorious event happened a little bit differently. Instead of just two members, the entire seven showed up to not just any hijacked plane, but one of the planes from the September 11th attacks. Maeve, Homelander, and the whole gang, including Jack from Jupiter and Mr. Marathon, were there and they all failed just as miserably, instead causing the plane to crash into the Brooklyn Bridge. This effort killed Mr. Marathon, making way for A-Train to join the team, and was probably one of the biggest cover-ups Vought committed in the comics, which is saying a whole lot. The Boys series has gender-swapped several characters such as Stormfront and Vic the Veep, but there has perhaps been no greater impact from a gender-swapped character than Madeline Stillwell, a high-ranking Vought executive who oversees the Seven, and in the comics is better known as James Stillwell. In the comics, James is cold and inhumane, only ever putting Vought's interests above the well-being of others. He has a much more controlling relationship over Homelander, and lasts a lot longer than the show's version. Madeline is the most significant relationship Homelander has in Season 1, and uses his affection for her as a manipulation tactic to get what she wants. James is cold and uncaring, but Madeline is truly afraid of the psycho suit. I said I'm scared. This even leads to her demise when Homelander burns the eyes out of her head. It's truly horrifying and provides much more of a reason for us to know who Homelander is than the comics version of Stillwell ever could. One of the biggest rivalries in the show was between A-Train and Huey. It defined the first season from the moment A-Train went speeding through Huey's girlfriend, leaving nothing but a couple of hands left. From that moment, Huey and A-Train's paths were intertwined, whether the speedster knew it or not. Huey began to form a relationship with Starlight, the newest member of the Seven, which meant that his foil and A-Train had to be in one as well. A-Train was secretly dating the soup and movie star named Popclaw. Together, they indulged in drug use and overall obnoxious soup behavior. What are you talking about? Popclaw became enraged when A-Train had to continue keeping their relationship a secret while his public persona was a player. Popclaw then had a mishap during a drug-fueled cheating escapade. And let's just say the boys stepped in to take advantage of the situation. Popclaw led the boys, including Huey, to the secrets of Compound V, putting herself and A-Train in grave danger. In order to save himself, A-Train caused an intentional overdose to the woman he loved and killed Popclaw, unintentionally giving revenge to Huey. How is this weird relationship different from the comics? Well, quite simple. In the comics, A-Train and Popclaw do not even share a single panel and have quite literally never met. There's possibly no soup in the boys show that went from hero to zero faster than the D. Hey. Deservedly so, as the guy sucks. So this fall, remember, go D. He's one of the least intelligent, most pathetic and disgusting members of the Seven, whose actions towards Starlight on her first day are reprehensible. He's been kicked from the Seven and even fakes a marriage just to make his way back on. He's the laughing stock of the soup world and now has nothing left but serving as the yes man to Homelander. In the comics, the Deep is a much different character. On Starlight's first day, it's oddly enough the Deep that is the only one who doesn't participate in the mistreatment of her. Black Noir, A-Train, and Homelander actually abuse her that night, and the Deep serves as a more mature and savvy member of the team. I know, hard to believe, right? <laughs> probably the coolest thing about the Deep in the comics is his look, one that is probably the most different of any Vought suit. I know it would be hard to translate that helmet to live action, but I just wish they would have done it anyway. Becca Butcher is essentially the catalyst for the creation of the Boys. The wife of the boys' leader, Billy Butcher, she had unspeakable things done to her by Homelander, which led to her giving birth to his child. In the comics, that's where it ends, as Becca Butcher perishes, giving birth to a soup baby who kills her immediately. Oh my god. The show seemed at first like it was picking up after this event, with Billy believing that she was dead and gone. The biggest twist of season one was the revelation that Becca Butcher was alive, and she had successfully been hidden by Vought and was raising her and Homelander's child in secret. So basically, all of season two was completely original, 
Homelander never used Becca as a weapon over Butcher's head, and her death was not at the hands of her much older son. Becca Butcher is a large reason for the boy's existence in either medium, but in the show she is much more of a game changer until her eventual demise. He's good, he's good. The female of the species is the most powerful member of the boys. She is constantly used as their weapon who can tangle with just about any soup thanks to her healing abilities. In the show, the boys found the female locked in a cage and Frenchie, who felt an instant connection, set her free. Eventually, the boys used the washed up soup Mesmer to learn about her backstory. She was a member of a terrorist group who had used her as a test subject for Vought. The evil corporation was making soup terrorists in an effort to force soups into the military. The female is pumped full of Compound V over and over again, leading to her incredible power and lack of trust issues, which Frenchie has finally overcome. In the comics, the female's origin is much different. The comic female accidentally ate some Compound V as a baby, which led to her powers. In the comics, the boys still do not know her name, and no one except for Frenchie even understands her. She's still the boys' greatest weapon, but got there in a much different way. There's another character who just has more to do in the comics than he does in the series. That's right, we're talking about Love Sausage. Mm -hmm. Love Sausage, huh? Look, let's just say for good reason based on this guy's uh, unique power set. He has really only appeared in brief cameos more in the show. To party. In the comics, Love Sausage is actually a very powerful suit with the same weird power. He's actually accomplished incredible feats. Along with the boys, Love Sausage was able to kill the extremely powerful Stormfront. He is actually a very heroic character in the comics, who was created during the Soviet Union. But between you and me, I'd really be okay if his appearances just stuck to cameos. This is a good name for me. I like it. Come on in. Certain teams portrayed in the show are much different in the comics. The greatest example is probably the team known as Payback. In the comics, the team was a Nazi group secretly led by Stormfront, though Soldier Boy was their leader in name. Several members from the show were also on the team in the comics, such as Crimson Countess and Swato. The problem is, the payback we are introduced to in the show is much more like the Avenging Squad, which included several of the same members, and saw the same type of screw-up in World War II, only this time leading to most of their deaths, including the original Soldier Boy. The show has certainly taken some liberties and borrowed aspects of different teams, but if the Seven are the Justice League, then the comic version of the Avengers died long ago. Hey guys! Season 3 has seen certain members of the boys going against some of the values they have held since episode 1. Billy Butcher and Huey hate soup so much, but in the show they have started to become them. They do this using a compound called Temporary V. This is an augmented version of Compound V that has been altered to only last 24 hours. We also learned in recent episodes that it could have slightly less than beneficial and albeit fatal side effects. In the comics, however, the boys go up against soups all the time with Temporary V. They almost always have powers when they fight soups. Not only that, but while in the show, Butcher was given the Temp V by Maeve. In the comics, he actually engineers it himself. Temp V may only be a temporary thing for the few members of the boys that use it in the show, but in the comics, it's their bread and butter. I mean... Soldier Boy is the man out of time and the perfect foil for season three of the boys. However, his comic history is so much different. First of all, he is not the man out of time he is in the show, but instead, Soldier Boy is a mantle that gets passed down from soup to soup. The first iteration actually died in World War II along with the rest of his soup team. Now I got nothing. The most recent version is a scared pants wetting soup, who is just another pawn used by Vought. The show's choice to make him one of the soups capable of rivaling Homelander, and spoiler alert, his possible biological father, oh boy. means they may be replacing the comic role of Stormfront with Soldier Boy. The versions of Soldier Boy in the comics are much more cowardly and naive, but the show has given him the full Winter Soldier treatment, wearing a cape. being experimented on and now seeking revenge on his team that betrayed him. Also, he couldn't really do the whole radioactive chest explosion thing, which I gotta admit makes him a lot more intimidating than the one that wets his pants. Ryan is the super powerful son of Homelander and Becca Butcher, who Billy has somewhat taken on the responsibility of raising after the death of his wife. I see you. Belongs to you, Mom. It seems as though Ryan is being raised to one day take on his father as the only being who can match his power. Yeah. yeah. The show's version of Ryan has already outlived his comic version, and that's thanks to a much more cruel and heartless version of Butcher in the comics. After the baby soup killed his wife in childbirth, Billy never let the child see his first birthday. So Ryan, who has been and likely will be a huge player in the series to come, barely even existed in the comics. He may be taking on some backstories of characters like Soldier Boy, but the show has open license to turn Ryan into whatever they want, which makes it all the more exciting. Don't be a
There may be several changes from the comics to the show, but the overall disturbing thing Soup's do definitely stays consistent. Which change from the comics were you most surprised to find out? And which character do you think has benefited the most? 